Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. What is syntax? Linguists use the term syntax in two different ways. They use it as a name for the subdiscipline that studies sentence structure, and they use it as a name for the phenomenon that we're studying. That is, part of the grammar that results in sentences. Having two usages like this is common. For example, the term chemistry can both refer to the scientific discipline that studies chemistry, such as the chemistry department, and it also refers to the thing we're studying, as in the chemistry of a liquid. As a discipline, syntax is defined as a science. Syntacticians investigate the principles of how words and phrases are put together into sentences using the scientific method. Let's think a little bit about what sentences are. Consider the following list of words. Attack. Puppy. Brave, the, kitten, smelly. We know the meaning of each of these words, but we don't know the situation they describe until they're organized into a sentence. The brave kitten licked the smelly puppy describes one such situation. If we shuffle the words around into different orders, we get very different meanings. The smelly kitten licked the brave puppy. The brave puppy licked the smelly pu kitten. The smelly puppy licked the brave kitten, and so on. But note, not any string will do. For example, take the string puppy licked smelly the, the kitten brave. This doesn't mean anything. The words have to be organized into specific kinds of structures. There has to be a subject noun phrase and an object noun phrase, and they have to be ordered in some particular way with respect to the verb. Now, there are languages where order seems to be less important, and we will return to those languages later in this video series. So turning back to the question of what is a sentence, a sentence is a hierarchically organized structure of words that maps those words to meaning and vice versa. The study of syntax is a science, and what that means is we use the scientific method to investigate it. We observe some data, we make generalizations, develop hypotheses, and then test it against some more data. Let's do an example. We're going to look at the phenomenon called anaphora. Anaphors are nouns that refer back to another noun in the sentence. For example, the words himself, herself, and themselves are all anaphors. In a sentence like, John loves himself, himself refers back to John. Now consider the following three sentences. John loves himself. Mary loves herself. John and Mary love themselves. Let's try to develop a hypothesis about where you get himself, herself, or themselves. If we look at this data, at least this very small set of data, we can see that the form of the anaphor is dependent upon the gender and number of the subject that it refers back to. So we can develop a hypothesis that maybe anaphors agree with the noun they refer to in number and gender. We can test this against more data. So for example, we can test it using the subject noun phrase, the boy. We have the boy loves himself, that's fine. But the boy loves herself is bad, and the boy loves themselves is also bad. They don't sound right to native speakers. This tells us that our hypothesis is on the right track. Now let's add some more data to our experiment. We're going to use sentences that have pronouns as subjects. We have the sentence, he loves himself, she loves herself, they love themselves, I love myself, and you love yourself. The last two aren't actually predicted by our hypothesis, so we're going to have to revise it to accommodate this. I and we are first person, you is second person, 
and he, she, and they are third person. So we will revise our hypothesis so that the form of an anaphor is dependent upon the gender, number, and person of the subject. This entire series of videos is an example of the scientific method in the large sense. We're going to start with some initial hypotheses that are relatively simple. Then we're going to revise them based on new data into new versions of those hypotheses. Then we're going to look at more data and revise again. We're going to keep revising until we get to the end of the book. Now some students find the constant learning and revision annoying. They just want the answer. But that isn't really how science works. And that's not how linguists work either. So to summarize, the term syntax has two usages. One is it describes the phenomenon of sentence structure, and the other is it describes the discipline that studies that phenomenon. Sentences are complex structures that connect words together into descriptions of larger events or states. Syntax uses a scientific method, which means we observe some data, make hypotheses, and test those hypotheses against more data.